What's up guys, it's John from Optech coming at you today with my best Pascal gaming PC full installation guide in the recently released NZXT S340 Elite case with that full tempered glass side panel that just looks amazing and being the Pascal build, it also has a GTX 1070. You could go with the 1080 in your build, but this particular build is not so much about the part selection and the rationale behind the part selection, but rather the installation in today's featured case, that's the NZXT S340 Elite. So I'm gonna step out of the way, show you guys the parts real briefly, and then get into the installation of all these parts and give you guys a step-by-step -step guide. So if you wanted to follow along and do a build just like this one, you are set with this video. And I'll also be sure to include links and deals in the description box down below for each of these parts. So you can also check up on the current pricing availability and any further information and questions you have about any of these components. All right, let's do this. But this build with these particular parts will just crush 1080p gaming dominate 1440p gaming typically getting 60 or more frames per second in all those triple a titles at max settings at 1440p well let's kick off this video right now and let me start off with the processor we have the intel core i7 6700k clocked at 4 gigahertz so being a k-series processor you can also overclock with this bad boy it's a little bit of overkill for a gaming pc i would recommend you go with the i5 6600k save yourself a hundred dollars if you're only going to be using it for gaming but for video editing four powerful cores plus hyper threading on this i7 is pretty awesome for the ram we have two eight gigabyte sticks of corsair vengeance led that's right there's leds on the heat spreaders red leds in particular for this ram pretty tight timings c16 and at 3200 megahertz so it will definitely mitigate the potential of any bandwidth bottlenecks for sure great kit of ram ram set you back around 100 dollars. the i7 set you back around 330 dollars moving on to the motherboard we have from msi the z170a gaming m5 for 160 dollars pretty much all you would want out of a motherboard with just loads of connectivity and definitely a premium PCB and VRM on this one. For the graphics card, we went with the MSI Gaming X GTX 1070. So obviously being a Pascal gaming PC build, we wanted to go with the 10 series cards. So there's quite the lineup right, right now, 1050, 1060, 1070, 1080, or if you really wanted to step it up and go all out, the Titan X Pascal, although well, the 1070, is really that happy medium doesn't totally kill your wallet at around four hundred dollars a little more than four hundred dollars and gets you like i was saying that amazing performance out of this gaming pc that's so ready for 1440p and obviously crushing 1080p so for the power supply from evga for 100 dollars we have the supernova 650 watt platinum certified fully modular power supply for help with cable management it's already so easy with the NZXT case that we went with. Moving on to the case, like I was just talking about the star of today's show, I would say, since this is what we're gonna be building all of the components in, the NZXT S340 Elite. So obviously an all steel construction, that full tempered side glass panel that really shows off all the components, three SSD caddies, to show off your storage devices if you do put SSDs. And just like on the predecessor, the S340 has that NZXT bar that's really useful for cable management and hiding those cables. And on the back, it even has four NZXT clamps. So it makes cable management really easy for anyone. So the cables are gonna be really clean. And for the cooler, pretty excited about this. We have the world's first variable speed all-in-one liquid cooler also from NZXT is gonna keep that i7-6700K really nice and cool while we get that overclock on. This is the Kraken X61. Also look out for the X62. That's probably out by the time I upload this video. And both of them look really sick and are gonna perform really well. That will set you back around $115 at the time of filming this video. 
For storage, we just have a solid state drive from PNY, 240 gigabyte. I'll probably throw in a couple other SSDs, but I wanna feature this one from PNY. There's also a 960 gigabyte, a 480 gigabyte one from PNY because they're really good price to performance wise, being that they have sequential read and write speeds on up there with the very best that the consumer solid state drive market has to offer right now, if you wanna compare it to Samsung or some of those other really popular SSDs. And they typically come in price below those really popular SSDs, but maintain those really fast read and write speeds. Well, enough of my over expounding on the part selection. This should probably set you back around $1,500, but well worth it will last two years to come. And it's also a PC that's ready to power up that Oculus Rift or the HTC Vive. The NZXT S340 Elite even comes with a magnetic puck that you can put on the front, on top. You can either have it hold your headset or that VR headset and having the HDMI pass through on the front and lots of connectivity you could plug in that Oculus Rift, HTC Vive, your VR to the front of the case that just shows NZXT really went the extra mile. Well, let's finally get into the step-by-step -step installation guide for this awesome Pascal gaming PC featuring that NZXT Elite case. So before you start removing all the components from the boxes, make sure to remove everything you won't need off of a desk or a flat surface so you can provide yourself a large working area. Sorry that means you too little awe as cute of a kitten as you are. For a little electrostatic safety first, be sure to touch the steel case from time to time while assembling your PC. So the idea is to be on the same electrical level of your environment so there will be no electrostatic discharge that could potentially damage your components. So I like to install components while the motherboard rests on the box. I'm going to start off by installing the backplate to the NZXT X61 cooler with the sliders of the backplate in their innermost position. Just apply a little pressure and it locks into place on the back of the motherboard. Now I'm going to start by installing the CPU. Starting off by pushing down and away on the retention lever on the motherboard to lift the lid off LGA 1151 socket. Now holding the processor either by the two indentations or the edges to avoid getting any grease or oils on the heat spreader that would be on your fingers and be sure not to touch the bottom of the cpu that has those 1151 landings that align with the pins in the socket so line the arrow on the cpu with the dot on the motherboard that shows its proper orientation and without applying any pressure just set it in now lower the lid so the opening will go underneath the screw then slide the retention arm forward and underneath the locking mechanism now to install the rest of the nzxt x61 kraken cooler we're going to install this using the provided standoff which go in easily and you can screw in by hand. The X61 has pre-applied thermal compound, although you can use your own if you'd like. You can now install the pump's pre-installed bracket so that the standoffs go through the inner hole of the bracket. Then proceed to tighten the provided thumb screws onto the standoffs. You can tighten them in a crisscross pattern to keep more even pressure on the CPU. And now we can move on to removing the side panels to the NZXT S340 Elite case so we can access the inside of it. After you do this, you can begin by installing the IO shield in the rectangular hold on the back of the case with the keyboard hole on the top and speaker holes oriented on the bottom. The shield will just pop into position with a little bit of pressure. You can now install the power supply by removing four thumb screws on the rear bracket. Now I'd recommend making sure that you have all the cables you need to connect this modular power supply prior to installing the power supply since it's a little tight for space once all the cables are inside. Motherboard, CPU, VGA, the SATA power cables, and peripheral cable. Now install the rear bracket onto the power supply and slide the power supply into the back of the case with the fan facing down so it can draw in cool air that's readily available given the Elite's large rubber feet. Now secure the power supply by screwing the included thumb screws back on. So now a couple tips before beginning with this next portion of the assembly. If you do prefer to work with a magnetized screwdriver so you can avoid dropping any screws during the motherboard installation, you can do this by just placing the tip of your screwdriver on the magnetic side of the puck that comes with the NZXT S340 Elite case. Also take a second to make sure that the SATA and USB 3 connectors have room to reach the front of the board's corresponding connections by doing a dry fitting. So with the MSI Gaming M5 board, the USB 3.0 connectors path would be obstructed by the middle NZXT cable management clasp. So I moved the clasp down to an alternate location in order to accommodate for this particular motherboard's USB 3 connection layout. 
So now that you are ready to install the motherboard, the S348 Elite has pre-installed standoffs and a raised center standoff post to help with reducing movement of the board during installation. So just visually align the mounting holes on the board with the pre-installed standoffs and set the board in the case and secure the board using the included screws that come with the S340 Elite. And I generally do install the random access memory prior to this point, although installing RAM is pretty simple. So just open the retention levers on the RAM module slots 2 and 4, being that the manual for the gaming M5 board says to use these particular module slots to obtain dual channel if you're using two sticks. Now holding the RAM by the heat shield, align the keyed gold fingers with the notch in the corresponding memory module slot. Slide them into the track and press down on each end of the RAM stick so that the retention arms click back into place. Now for installing the radiator and fans to the front of the case. Remove the front panel of the case by just pulling on it. The latches release the panel with a light pull and also take out the front dust filter. It's magnetized so you can just pull on it and it comes right out. Now place the included X61 fans first with the NZXT logo facing inward and then place the 280 millimeter radiator behind them and now use the included eight 28 millimeter fan screws and eight washers to install the fans onto the radiator like such. After you're done doing this for a bit of wire management and connecting, start off by connecting the three pin power cable from the pump to the four pin CPU power connector on the motherboard. And now routing the SATA power cable from the pump to the back of the case, you can connect this to the SATA cable from the power supply. Also route the four pin fan cables to the back of the case and connect them to the first and second connectors on the fan power cable from the pump. And also connect the USB cable from the pump to one of the available headers on the motherboard by routing it through one of the bottom cable management holes. And while we're doing all this connecting, the S340 Elite comes with a 128 millimeter fan in the rear as well as one on the top. So you can either plug the three pin headers into the motherboard connections or use the default Molex Y splitter and connect them directly to the corresponding power supply connection. Now for installing the solid state drives. With three mounting brackets, I'm going to start with one that's most visible through the case for the featured PNY drive in this particular build. Simply remove the caddy by unscrewing the thumb screw. Slide the bracket off and proceed to place the drive inside until you hear it click into place. Then screw four of the provided screws as they align with holes on the back of the mounting plate for your drive to be extra secure. Then reattach the mounting bracket by securing it with the thumb screw that you just removed and repeat this process as necessary if you have more than one two and a half inch drive. And at this point, you can now route the SATA data cables through the corresponding holes and plug them into the SSDs and also route the SATA power cables from the power supply and insert the power connections into the solid state drives. These SATA connectors are keyed, so there is only one way to insert them into the back of the solid state drives. Now would also be a good time to connect the SATA data cables to the front of the motherboard by routing them through the cable management holes up through the NZXT cable management bar and clips. Now for the front panel connectors. You can grab the wires that have the small connectors on them and now route them through the bottom wiring hole. Here I have the hard disk drive LED. The hard disk drive connector goes on the far left bottom rows, two pins with the positive side on the left. Now the power LED plus goes on the pin to the far left top row and the power LED negative on the adjacent pin on the top row. Now proceed to insert the power switch into the two pins on the top row right next to the power LED connectors. Now for the HD audio connector, route it from the front of the case through one of the cable management cutouts and do notice that this connector is keyed so there's a block pin that corresponds with the missing pin on the HD audio connector on the far left of the motherboard. Also now is a good time to connect that USB 3 to the front of the board and also make sure it has the correct orientation for the connection since this connector is also keyed. And now to give power to the motherboard for the 24 pin motherboard power cable, route it through the NZXT clips and behind the cable management bar and proceed to insert this into the large connector on the front right of the board. There is a clip so you'll hear it snap into place when connected. And now for the CPU 8 pin connector, route that cable up through the top wiring hole and just plug it in and you should hear a light 
clicking sound just as you did on the motherboard power cable. And finally, for the installation of the Pascal graphics card, remove the back metal plate on the case by undoing the top and bottom thumb screws on that plate. And now remove two of those PCIe back plates that correspond with where the graphics card aligns with the topmost PCI Express slot. And with this motherboard and card being a dual slot card, the second and third PCI back plates can be removed by removing those some screws and giving it a light pull as such. Now open up the retention lever on the top PCI Express slot that feels similar to those RAM retention levers. Now insert the MSI GTX 1070 into the respective slot and there will be a clicking noise from the retention arm when it is properly seated. Now you can use the thumb screws from the PCIe backplate to give even more stability to the card and you can also go ahead and reinstall that back metal plate to prevent an unwanted opening in the back of your case. And now to give power to the video card, you're going to use the PCIe cables to power the GPU and they are labeled VGA on the ends with this particular power supply. This card uses a six pin and eight pin and they can either be routed underneath for that cool look you see a lot, especially with custom sleeve cables, or you can sneak them behind the NZXT cable management bar, which I've done so here to hide those cables as much as possible. So when inserting these connections, you'll hear them click into place in the corresponding six and eight pin plugs on the front of the graphics card. So now that we are almost done, do take this time if you'd like to make the cable management both in the front and back of the case extra tidy and clean looking. Those included zip ties are your friend and the abundance of tie down points for whatever cable management methodology you use should have you set. And with the included NZXT clips, it does make it super easy Easy to manage those cables. Now just put the side panels back on. The timber glass panel goes back on quite easily, just requires you to tighten those thumb screws. And the back panel should slide on with great ease given how flush the cables are using those NZXT clips and tie down points. All right, everyone, that concludes this Pascal Gaming PC build guide. I really hope you enjoyed it. Building in the NZXT S340 Elite case really was pretty awesome, and it's really great how well the cable management turned out and how clean it looks sitting on my desk right now. I really hope you like the final product and really hope this video will help someone out. And be sure to leave a comment down below if you have a comment or any questions about this gaming PC build and if you are not subscribed to my channel awe of tech what are you waiting for get subscribed help my channel grow so i can continue to bring you guys better and better content in the future you guys are awesome this is john from awe of tech catch you guys in the next video